Okay, today I want to talk about the use of namespaced objects and functions for wrappers around your code. Now, everybody understands the importance of namespacing your code. You don't want to have conflicts with other people. If somebody decides to use your JavaScript library and somebody else's JavaScript library, and you both are using the same JavaScript variable names, then there's going to be conflicts. Whoever gets loaded second is going to overwrite this, the first person. So what we do to avoid this is we create namespaces. We create top-level variables, and we contain all of our code inside those. We, so we only have to make sure that one thing is unique. On this page, I've got two different approaches to this. One of them is just a namespaced object like this. So I have an object. It's set inside the variable obj ns. It has a property called name, a property called, or, or a method called init, and a method called action. If I want to start using the code inside here, typically I'll have something like this. I'll have a function called init, so then I use my namespace, I call this initial function, maybe this sets the value, so it would do something like obj.ns dot name equals whatever your new value is going to be. If I need to call the function action, I do obj ns dot action. Or alternatively, for both of those things, we can use the keyword this and call the function like that. So we can refer back and forth within here using this or using the name of your variable up here. Either way, we have code that's protected from conflicts with other people as long as they don't have the same name for the namespace. So that's one approach. The other one being the immediately invoked function expressions, the ifies. Here I have another variable. It's an ify. I can see that my function starts here. It ends right here at the bottom. And then I've got an extra set of parentheses right after it. This is going to call my function and run it. Now, what this is going to do is actually return an object. This is basically the same thing as what we're doing here. This is our namespaced object that's being returned and placed inside of here. So we could say ify dot init, ify dot action. It's going to run the same way inside of here. I can say obj iife dot name equals the new value or this dot name or this dot action to call the other function. So this is working the same way and that's purely because this object gets returned when this function runs and this is the thing that gets stuffed inside of this variable. Exact same thing that happened up here. The difference between these two is that here I have to explicitly say when I want to start this thing working, I have to call that init function to get everything prepared. Here, it's doing it for me. I'm calling it at the same time as declaring it. So I'm creating this returned object. The other difference is that inside the function, I can declare variables. I can declare variables for values. I can declare variables that hold functions. Then, because of the way scoping works in JavaScript, I can refer to those. Inside here, I can call the my private function like that. So if I did console.log private function running and I ran node Oh, sorry, I'm not calling this. Yes, I would have to still call uh, at the end here my obj ife dot action or my init. There we go. So my object is built, returned. I will have access to these things like this. If I wanted to run some of this code I could within here. I can call it and invoke it. There we go. Private function is running. When I call my init, it calls the action function and it calls this function. But somebody who's outside of here 
cannot call directly my private func. That is going to fail because this private function is wrapped inside of our function here. I can't get to that from outside of this object. This guy, because he's declared within the same context as this, has access to these things. But somebody outside cannot call this directly. So it's a great way to create some private variables, private functions that other people can't call. OK, so there we are. We've got pure objects that you can call to initialize. You have uh, functions which can return these objects, which also get the added benefit of having private things. Um, now inside of here, we can actually make these things run. Um, we can call that, you know, this right here could be called something called init as well. And this could be something that exists up here, like that. So there's the init inside of here being returned, so it's accessible. It's got the same name. It could have a different name. This could just be x, as long as this is called x. Up to you what you want to do with that variable. But because I've declared it here, it is possible for me to run this. Now, I'm going to have an issue with this.action because there's no action up at this level. I will comment that out. And I'll change this one down to action. And I will just replace this with a console.log. And we'll write out my private var. Okay, so here's my function called x. I'm going to run that. This is going to happen first. It's going to happen when this entire function is run, which is the first thing that's going to happen in my file. I'm going to be running this. It's going to be putting the result of this function, which is this object, into here. From here, I'm going to have access to whatever was in the returned object, name, init, and action. So I can use any of those things inside this object, outside my function. Init is pointing to a function x that was declared outside of the return object. So because it was declared outside, I can actually run it here. So this is running when the function runs. And then afterwards, if I want to run it again, I can call init. So we can call init, and we can call action. Okay, hidden value, hidden value, private function running. So hidden value is my private var. That is being written out by the function x. It's happening twice, which means it was run here, and then it was again run here after the object was returned and placed inside of here. And then action is the last one to run. It is going to run this one, which is going to call this function up here and write out this statement. All right, so there's namespaces and ifies and a little bit of a comparison between the two of them. You can use either one. If all you need is a container that's namesafe to use, and store all of your functions and methods, and you don't mind calling an initial one to get the ball rolling, great, you can do that. If you don't want to have to call something to get the ball rolling, use an iffy, use a function, and then define the function that you want to use to get the ball rolling, call it from inside your function, and then refer back to it. So if you do need to call it again, you still have access to it. If you don't want to access it again, you can just remove this from the returned object you will contain everything here the same way that you did up here. All right, hope that's clear. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.